Terry Crisco. I'm the director of the Master Theater Program here at Dwight, and I also direct the upper school theater productions and teach uh, drama nine and 10. Uh, before introducing our student pieces, I want to take a moment to applaud Dwight leadership uh, and the entire community actually for banding together and being so careful and caring. We managed to maintain on uh, in-person classes for some time. And uh, of course, it's my hope and yours, I'm sure that we can return to that very soon. In the meantime, bravo for being so safe. Uh, I'm also really grateful to all the performing arts department, the whole team for supporting me in this and also for making all this uh, art possible for our students at this time. So first up tonight, we have grade nine. In the first trimester, MYP Drama 9 students wrote, refined, rehearsed, memorized, and performed their own original monologues. They were generated out of an idea by each student from something that was important to them for whatever reason, personally. And then further, they were instructed that their character had to be a fictional one, and then challenged to embody that character's reality as actors. Further, the model that they're working under is walking into an audition room with no props to speak of, no costume, no set. So it's just about the actor transforming the air in the room. So tonight you will see pre-recorded and safely unmasked videos of each student's own original monologue. Uh, a few, of course, by necessity were filmed at home. On a lighter note, I never saw some of the new students' faces unmasked in person until I was filming their monologue. At one point, I needed to double check the roster to make sure I knew who I was filming. Okay, I'm kidding and exaggerating a little bit. Anyway, enjoy the ninth grade monologues. You know, I just love being a college student in New York City. Yeah, there really is nothing better than waking up at the crack of dawn to the sound of homeless men screaming and sirens wailing just to rush off to that glorious minimum wage job of yours, walking dogs and picking up their poop. Then of course, after those excruciating six hours of dealing with whatever comes out of those dogs, you race home with that hard-earned 90 bucks in your back pocket to pay those overdue bills, that money you conveniently do not have. That's okay. I mean, nobody really needs electricity. Then of course, after that come the classes. Oh, the classes, you know, the ones that seem to get harder and harder by the minute, making your life an endless spiral of work and stress just to get all this stuff done. So you end up an unmarried 40 year old living in your parents' basement with the rats. Maybe I'll live in the dorms next year. Hello first. Who doesn't say hello anymore? How are you? How was your day? Let me just see if Mr. Brown is available. I hate this job, I hate this job, I hate this job. Right there, and then inbox, and then send. Um, I'm just waiting for him to reply, but don't worry, he's usually a fast replier. You know what? She seemed impatient. Let me just call him so I do not keep you waiting. Good afternoon, Mr. Braun. I'm with one of your clients, Miss Relay, isn't it? She claims that she has an appointment with you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. He is so ungrateful. I am so nice to him and I do my job perfectly, but he treats me horribly. Um, unfortunately, he is not currently available, but he can see you for 30 minutes in five minutes. I hope that's not too long. Uh, now that you have a meeting with him, finally, I will need you to sign at the bottom of every single page. There are 20 pages in total. I know that there are a lot of pages, but it's just policy. I hate this policy, and I have to explain it 20 times a day. I will also need your credit card information, phone number, full name, and your COVID test results. Oh my god, she just coughed on me. You cannot see, on any circumstances, Mr. Brown until I verified that your COVID test results are negative. How long is this going to take? Oh, never mind. She signs pretty fast. Thank you for the 20 pages. Uh, the elevators are on your left. It is on the 88th floor, room 12B. I hope you have a nice meeting. And before you leave, please check out and schedule your next appointment with me if you have one. Thank you. This took so long. Finally got rid of her. Hey, hey, Carol, I just left the building now. 
And our reservation was at 7.30 at 501 Steakhouse, correct? Okay, I'm heading uptown now. Um, Carol, some lady just screamed. Give me a second. Carol, I, I think I'm gonna be a few minutes late. There's a figure swaying in the breeze on top of that building. I can't make out what it is. It's like a statue, perfectly still. Arms in a T position, legs together, facing forward. I, I hear sirens, they get louder and louder. Carol, there's a person up there. People are everywhere. There's police cars all around the area. Oh my God, firefighters are on the scene. And the, the police officer over there has a megaphone. The firefighters are going into the building. They're trying to negotiate. Oh, they're up there, they're up there. They're, they're gonna get him. <gasps> Carol, he, he jumped. Michael. 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 We need to talk. Yes, now. That's what I thought, now. What happened the other day? You will not be putting your hands on me again, got it? No, don't brush me off, I said, do you understand? You know that's not how you treat me. I don't know what's gotten into you these days, but I don't like it. The going out late, the drinking, all this stuff. You never used to do this. We aren't in high school anymore, what don't you get? See, this is what I mean. You don't even care. Okay. Get out. You know what I said? I said, get out. I'm not repeating myself to you. What do you mean I can't do this to you? Who do you think you are? I'm serious. Hold on. Let me get the lease, because last time I checked, I paid the rent. I, I don't understand. Maybe if you, if you just talk to me, and explain to me, maybe. And here I thought you'd be there for me. What a waste. Oh, you're hurt. You, Mr. Prince Charming, Mr. Basketball Star. <laughs> God, my mother was right. Five years, five years wasted. All for you and your ungrateful self. My freaking scholarship. Not to mention, McKenna texted me pictures of you and Lexi real comfortable at last night's party. I, I don't understand. You know I've gone through this before. I saw the pictures. No. Don't even try to touch me. Now get out. Good morning. Hello, Bob. My name is John, and I will read you this paper, which is from one of my classmates, who is bullied by everybody in my school. My classmate's name is Fred. The paper is saying, I love our cookies. My favorites are the vanilla ones. They are simply delicious. Today, we ate a couple of them in my school backyard. It's September in Milan, and the sun is really strong. Tommy enjoyed a lot of them, as usual. He's so small and skinny, but his appetite is incredible. Shh, Tommy, don't start laughing as usual, otherwise they will find us. Then, a blow. Then another one. I can feel a bitter taste on my tongue. Everybody's yelling, and I cannot figure out what happened. I can see and hear them, they were saying. We can't stand you, even if you're rich. We will wait for you outside. Your father's cookies really suck. Tommy is close to me, and he is helping to me to stand up again. I still love my school and my cookies. Even if my classmates are not as kind as usual, no, as Tommy is. I will bring again my father's cookies. Maybe I will just change flavor.
It was freezing cold last night in Manhattan, and I had just left my apartment and my dog, Leo. I turned on the corner of 42nd Street and headed toward Times Square to meet my date. Once there, I knew where to go. We were meeting outside the M&M store. I looked around to see if my blind date was there. All I knew was that her name was Elizabeth. You had set it all up. So, I got there at 7.02, when we were supposed to meet at 7. I just figured she'd be a few minutes late. I waited and waited, and time slowly passed by, and before I knew it, it was 7.20. I called you and called you repeatedly, but there was nothing, no answer. So, I kept on waiting, and waiting, until 9. My hands were freezing in my pockets, my leg was numb, and my nose turned blue. But, I kept on waiting, and waiting, and then, it turned 11. The M&M store owner comes out, looks at me with a look of pity, and tells me we're closing. So I looked down at my feet, shaking, except defeat, and head home. But, but then I remembered. What about you? You hadn't answered any calls, nothing. So I head up to your apartment, and she's in here with you? Yes, Mrs. Grayson, I'll look after your son. I'm sure it will be fine, and I'll call you if I need anything. Have fun tonight, and take your time. Bye. Yes, I promise you nothing will happen to your son, Tom. Okay, bye. Okay, so Tom was in his room. Mrs. Grayson said to the right and then the second door to the left. Ah, oh, so this must be it. Tom? Um, Tom? Hey Tom, it's me, Molly. I am here to babysit you. Um, well, I I'm coming in now, just letting you know. Tom, are you in here? Tom, can you please answer me? Tom, if you don't come out now, I will tell your mom about it. Oh, wait, no, wrong tactic. Tom, if you come out now, I will give you candy and I will allow you to watch a scary movie. I promise, just please come out now. Oh, wait, this always works. How come he isn't listening? Oh my God, <laughs> the window's open. Oh God, D did he run away? You know what? I'll, I'll just call Mrs. Grayson. Oh, okay. Oh, voicemail, oh God. Hi, um, Mrs. Grayson, it's me, Molly. I, I can't find your son, Tom, and, and the window was open. Maybe he ran away. I, I don't know. I should have looked after him. I promise you. I know I should have. You know what? I I'll find him. I will. I will. Oh, God, what do I do? I had one task. Look after her son. <sighs> should I call the police? Wait, no. They only respond after 24 hours. <sighs> oh, God. Why is this happening? Why me? I could have been at home watching Gossip Girl for God's sake. Where's my coat? Tom, I'm coming for you. Don't worry. Hello, Dwight School. Um, I am telling you this, not because it is easy for me, but because I just want you guys to know that if you witness something terrible, please, please, please do not try and keep it in and tell your friends and family because they will help you. My name is Joshua Halton and a year ago I witnessed something that would never leave my head. I would have that image for my whole life. It was in New York City on a freezing cold day. I wake up every day at 6.30 a.m. to get ready for work. I get out of bed, I have a shower, then have the usual, yogurt with strawberries on top of it. I then leave my house in Brooklyn and take the subway to 49th Street. On the train, I'll see the usual people rushing just like I do. But as, but as I was sitting, I saw a man looking fairly suspicious, and then seconds later, I heard a scream in the packed train. I looked around, and the suspicious man was gone from my sights. And instead, what I saw was a very badly wounded man on the floor who was stabbed in the stomach several times with blood pouring down. I was thinking to myself, does this really happen, have to happen to me? Today, I had a very important meeting with my boss and I just couldn't be late. So I called 911 and there were police officers waiting at the station for the person who stabbed the poor man. The next day, I saw on the news that there was a stabbing on the train and what I realized was that I was a witness. know what we just did oh my god oh my god guys our friend has been stuck in our clo my closet my my closet for more than two 
days now. Okay, I don't, I don't think you guys understand. Our friend's dead. She's gone. And we're gonna get framed, okay? Do you think Yale, Columbia, Harvard is going to accept us when we're in this mess? No, 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 no. They're not even going to want us in their building. They're gonna think we're murderers. Okay, okay. Let me think. I think we should move her body. I mean, wait, no, oh my God. Every move can be risky. Do you guys understand? We can, we can get caught, we, we, can, we can go to prison, no? Does that not cross your mind? Okay, okay, well. Detectives are smart. What am I thinking? I'm only a 12th grade student. I mean, I'm, I can get caught. Detectives are so much more smarter than me. Are you kidding? How are we ever going to escape this mess when there's detectives behind us and they're gonna find out what we did? And we're gonna go to prison. I mean, we didn't do anything, did we? Did we? Maybe we did. Maybe we did and I'm just like crazy. Okay. Okay, let me think. I think we should move her body. But it, but it has to be late at night, okay? No one can figure this out or we're screwed. Do, do you guys understand? Hello, do you guys not understand that our friend is dead right now and we're gonna get caught? Are, are you guys like serious right now? Guys, Avery's dead. She's gone, and even though you guys hated her, I loved her. She was my best friend. She was the only one that cared about me. And she's dead. And I need to find justice for my best friend. I need to figure out who killed my best friend. Now, I don't care if you guys are in or out. I'm doing this alone. I don't care if you don't like it. So is any of you guys in? It was an accident, okay? I didn't mean to kill her. I was walking home on the path that goes up the hill. The one with a lot of stairs. You know the one by that big fountain? Yeah, that's the one. When I heard something behind me, I panicked. I mean, anyone would have panicked. It was late and dark outside. I didn't even see her face before I pushed her. Just her silhouette. And when I pushed her, she fell and hit her head and didn't move. I remember the sound of her head hitting the pavement. I don't think I'll ever forget that sound. I tried to check if she was okay. I dragged her back to my house. It was horrible. I could feel her weight on my shoulder, her blood seeping into my shirt. I could barely carry her, but I managed. Once I got her back to my house, I tried to use some bandages, but it was too late. She was already dead. I, no, I didn't think to call an ambulance. I was worried they'd think it was me, which it wasn't. I just knew that I couldn't let anyone find out. I put her outside in my driveway and that's when I called the police. I thought that maybe if I was the one who found her, that they think I was innocent, that they think it wasn't me. Yes, hi, hello. Um, I'd like to make a New Year's toast just for me having such a wonderful year. I mean, it's, it's truly been wonderful, um, except for the fact that you lost your dog and you broke your arm and <laughs> your mom died, right? I'm so sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to laugh, it just came out, I'm, uh, anyway, so, if you guys didn't know, I got a job, yep, me, uh, you guys know the Domino's down the street from this restaurant, I work there, I work there, yeah, so please just feel free to pop in anytime, oh, oh, and there's, um, a jar in the front on the counter that says T-I-P-S, tips, T-I-P, tips, yeah, Please feel free to use that. 
um because because i don't make a lot of money so uh yeah that's pretty much it you know i just wanted to tell you that i got a job at domino's you want to know where it is uh you know and knock on wood that nobody else's mom dies or i'm so sorry i didn't i didn't mean to laugh again uh can i get you a free pizza Do, would you like that yeah great um can you still give me the tip because i kind of need the money so um anyway uh happy new year's everyone oh just shut up do you think i care that he gave you flowers that he held your hand and told you how much he loved you he's probably going to cheat on you again anyways I'm not being negative, I'm just being realistic. He's not good for you. I know this because ever since you've been dating him, you cry every single night. You're not happy anymore. He's a bastard, just leave him already. I bet he's screwing around right now with those girls from lunch. You seriously didn't see him flirting with them? God, you are blind. He does things right under your nose, and you can't even tell because he has some weird hex on you. Watch it happen again. And when you come crying, I'm not going to comfort you. You know what? I'm not even going to be there for you. I'm right and you know it. You're choosing to get hurt. So what if he changed? I don't think he did and I don't believe his stupid act either. You don't need me anymore? Fine. Go cry to your cheating, backstabbing bastard of a boyfriend. So, yeah, thank you so much. I'll try that with him later today. But, anyways, as you know, school just closed, toilet paper is out, and my family, just like so many others, fled to the Hamptons to escape the danger of what New York City was. Despite all this, my dad still had to work. He's an orthopedic surgeon, you know, just not in the head to head battle with the COVID patients, but he was still in contact with them. The hospital gave him no PPE to wear. Horrible. He was terrified to do the thing that he's done for 25 years of his life. Terrified. When the weekend came, though, he was so excited to see us. It gave, it filled his heart. And he said that COVID couldn't live on him that long. So, like idiots, we let him come. It was only a matter of time before we all got sick. Really, about two weeks. First my dad, then my sister, next my mom, and lastly me. Before I was sick, I, I was tending for them, cooking food for them, nursing them back to health, but it was all too much, and then I got sick. When I was sick, it, it was like a weight was put on my chest, and there was a fog around my head, I couldn't think. And then the worst happened. I fell to the cold floor with a febrile seizure. You know, step by step, inch by inch, I recovered. And it was about to be my birthday. I was so excited. And you know, something got to my head that, you know, just maybe, maybe everything might turn out okay. It might just go back to the way it was. <sighs> but that was too good to think of. Two days before my birthday, in the middle of the night, my sister had to drive my mom to the hospital. The only thing during my birthday, all I was wishing for is that my mom would come and hug me one day. Um, 329, 329, 329. Oh, there it is. Oh my goodness. I, I am so, so sorry about that. Um, my name is Lily Benjamin, and uh, I'm your new assistant. Nope, not the handshake type of guy. Got it. Uh, this phone. Nope, not that either. Okay, then. Well, um, I'm sorry that I was late for work. I promise you I had a really important reason for being late. Fired? No, 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 no. You can't fire me. Please, 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 please let me explain. Please, 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 please. Oh, okay, thank you. Well, I woke up this morning feeling absolutely fantastic. And then I went on my daily morning walk and you wouldn't believe what happened to me. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what happened to me. I stepped in dog poop. It was the most disgusting thing in the history of disgusting thingies. It was horrible. 
and then I had to hop all the way back home on one foot. And then I finally got in the shower and took probably the longest shower in the history of showers. And I left my house feeling much better, hoping I wouldn't step in dog poop again. Then I went to my local coffee shop for my regular decaf white black frappuccino with peppermint tea and four shots of espresso and 2% milk and foam and no talking to syrup and whipped cream and three pounds of strawberry syrup and um, gear well black dark coffee. And um, they told me they didn't have my drink. I mean, like, why would they not have my drink? My drink is like so easy. I don't understand it, but it's whatever. So I got a black frappuccino instead. And I was finally on my way to work and I got a flat tire. Like nothing else could go wrong today. I was <sighs> annoying. And you would not believe what happened to me. The probably weirdest looking man came up to me. He was looked like Captain Jack Sparrow, but uglier. Oh my God. But he offered to fix my tire, so I accepted it. And I was on my way to work and I had to run upstairs because the elevator was broken too. I bet the universe just doesn't want me to go to work today. And so I ran upstairs and I was given papers, told you we were in a very important meeting and told where my desk was. So I ran down the hall to 329 and well, here I uh, am. Ta-da! No? Okay then. Well, now I see why I was late. So can you, can, can you please, 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 please not fire me? Please. I'm not fired. Oh my god, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wait, what's the one condition? You got it, Mr. Bob. I will leave you alone for the rest of the day. C train? Yeah. Do you believe in aliens? I believe in aliens. All my friends, they they, they, they say I'm crazy. It's said I'm crazy. They're not, they're not around anymore. But that's only because they can't see my vision. They don't know what I know. What, what do I know? You, you wouldn't get it, you wouldn't get it. But the, the internet, it's a very reliable place. The only reason people say that I'm crazy is because all these people calling themselves scientists, they're distracting from the real proof. You know, if someone sees a clear UFO, these scientists, they'll call it an airplane. These scientists, they'll call it an airplane. Like who are you to say what is it isn't an airplane? But either way, as long as it fills me so people's short attention spans, they eat it up. And another thing. Oh, this is my stuff. Hey, do you believe in mole people? Oh, um, one more thing. What color balloons do you want? Okay, great. What do you mean? Oh, come on, I'm sure it'll be great. All your friends will come over. There'll be games and cupcakes and balloons. Why would they not like it? We're still having the party. But is there someone you didn't want to invite? Then what is it? We're having the party. You were so excited about it last week. What changed? Answer me. What changed? What do you want to change? We're, we're having the party. We can't cancel it anymore. It's already all planned. Everyone already RSVP. We can't cancel the party. Why do you want to cancel it? I'll be fine. It will be. F oh my God, everything will be fine. Shut up. If you don't want to have the party, we'll cancel the stupid party. If you just want to uninvite everyone, we'll do it. I don't care anymore. Everything I do, I do for you. So stop it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. You have to understand. I don't, I don't want to force you to have this party. You know what? I'll text everyone. I'll say that something came up. 
but only if that's what you really want me to do. Okay, then I'll do it. Look, I know it's your job or something to ask me this, but I don't want to talk about it. I'm here because my family thought it would do me some good and no offense, but it hasn't. Richard is gone and there, there's nothing I, I can do to stop it. I said I don't want to talk about it! Calm down! Calm down! You have no idea what I've been through. My fiance died right next to me as I was sleeping. And do you expect me to calm down? His mother blames me for his death, even though the week before she was helping me pick out my wedding dress. Fine. I'll tell you. We had just finished watching a movie together, and I had fallen asleep on the couch. And when I woke up, his eyes were glassy. Lifeless. I started to say his name louder and louder until I was shrieking at the top of my lungs. I started to feel for a pulse and I even slapped him. And then I called the police and I couldn't, I couldn't stop shrieking. And the EMTs came and they told me he was gone and I started to shriek and scream and I tried to rush towards him, but they held me down to EMTs had to hold me down because I was too hysterical. Two EMTs had to hold me down because I was too hysterical. It's, it's all my fault. You want to know why I think it's my fault? Four years of medical school and the fact that he was right next to me. I'm a nurse. He died of a stroke. I could have helped him. If I had woken up or if I had not fallen asleep, I would have been able to hear him. What if he had tried to make contact with me? I failed. I failed. I failed him, I failed his family, and I failed myself, doctor. Look, isn't it pretty? If you really want to know, I, I just wish I could tell him I'm sorry. Good afternoon, sinners. My name is Lucy F. And on behalf of this entire airline, I welcome you aboard flight 666 nonstop to hell. You all did something to piss off JC up there, and now you are in this lovely flight. I am here to give you the security announcement, which you can choose to ignore. I'll just tell you to quite literally go to hell. First off, kindly familiarize yourself with the absence of exits in this aircraft. In case of a fire, masks will drop directly above you, but they will be those neck gaiters that Republicans wear, so they won't do anything for you. Refreshments will be provided, but they will be the white box lunches, so starvation is usually the preferred option. We will have babies crying on cue, as well as people sleeping next to you. We will play a rendition of the Dwight School's Twelfth Night for your enjoyment. I am receiving a word from the captain, one moment. We are about to descend into airport SIN. The weather is currently inhumanly high. On behalf of the entire airline, I welcome you to hell. Way to go, grade nine. That was great. Congratulations. Next up is grade 10. This is MIP Drama 10. This unit is called Solo Theater Peace Unit. It was seriously impacted by the need to diligently maintain COVID restric restrictions. So some of these were created at home, some in the classroom under strict safety precautions so that they could be unmasked. All of these were arrived at in a multi-step process that began in late September with each student choosing a starting point that could be a place, an idea, a concept, a reality that was meaningful to them. 
that acted as a seed from which their piece grew. In the pieces, only the students themselves are permitted to be the performers. Therefore, all of the performers' voices, videos, characters in the individual pieces are played by them. I hope you enjoy it. Oh my God, oh my God. I can't believe this is happening. Oh my God. No one invited me to a party on Friday. That's great, right? I seriously can't wait. I still can't believe that this is happening. I mean, he's him and I'm well. Me. No, this would ever happen. But does he really want us there? Does he? You know, she said we're not cool or popular. We're not a guy like him. Want us at a party? So he doesn't really want me there. Exactly. He never wanted you there. I mean, we look at you. But it seems so nice when I was talking to him. Make a big, ugly, fat fool of yourself. Then go. I guess you're right. But what if he does really want us there? I mean, maybe. He could really want us there. Yeah, he might. He really might. <gasps> I should pick my outfit. I have so many choices. What should I pick? What about this one? Are you sure about that? I think it's pretty. The dress is pretty. The problem is that you don't look pretty in it. Um, what about this one? Maybe. There's so many choices. How will we ever get to decide? You need to look pretty. <laughs> you know that's never going to happen. Let's be realistic. Uh, what about this one? Oh, I don't know, but... Oh, look at that one. I think I should wear this one. Are you sure about that? It makes you look fat. Really? Listen to me. I'm only trying to help you. I'm your friend, and friends are honest with each other. Everyone's gonna look at you and say, who's that badass in the ugly dress? Nobody wants you there because nobody likes you. Are you sure? Maybe you're right. Of course I am. We're here for you. It'll be okay, Claire. <laughs> no, it won't! <laughs> to blame. Guess she is. She's the problem. Shut up! Just shut up! Stop talking! I don't want to hear it! <laughs> Why does nobody like me? What did I do wrong? They always get in my head about these things. Why do I have to listen to them talking all day and night? They never stop. Why won't they stop? But they're right. I'm not cool. Nobody likes me. Why do I even try? <laughs> You're gonna be okay. We're here for you. Let the dress that you look terrible in. Alright. Oh, Claire, they're not the problem you are. You're right. I'm the problem. What do I do? What's wrong with me? Everything. Morning, sir. I have the daily requirements now. What do you want? Well, sir, that's precisely my point. I'm here to tell you that. What? You're gonna have to talk a little bit louder, kid. Well, sir, our company's gone bust. <sighs> Good one, kid. Good one. You are quite. I don't remember you being this much of a comedian. You know, I do find that quite hard to believe, knowing how well I'm, how well I run this company, and how good I am at time waste, uh, <clears throat> time management, time management. Sir, I'm not kidding. You can ask anybody, I promise you. The company's really gone bust. Alright, kid. Stop joking about. <laughs> you know what? Let me ask Carl. Trusty Carl, the security guard. He always knows what he's talking about. Let me give him a call. <laughs> oh. yeah, Carl, it's the big boss, the big man. The leader, the legend, yup. Me? Okay, I'll stop talking. Uh, yeah, so, little kid over here, you know, squirt, says, uh, company's gone bust. Just looking for your um, opinion on that and uh, whether that's true or not. Yes. Sorry? Can, um, I think you cut out something. Can you uh, repeat that one again? Yes, we are bankrupt. Oh, great. <laughs> great. Sorry. Great, great, great. Uh, talk to you later then. Great. So, boss, 
What's the news? Well, you know, the usual stuff. <laughs> what? No, no, the usual stuff. You just sent me the usual, you know, the usual, usual, usual. Daily report, poor matter, you know, boss type stuff. Well, Mr. President, you don't even get daily reports. I don't really know what you're talking about. I mean, anyway, import back to the import matter. Has the company actually gone bust or not? Mr. President, I do like... <coughs> Excuse me? Don't talk to your superior like that. I know I'm the leader of this company, but... Uh... Oh, Mr. President does sound actually pretty good. Keep, keep calling me that, actually. I'll put that on my CV for the next, for the next time. Oh God, what am I gonna do? I mean, you can try and get a new job. I mean, it's not too difficult. How do I get a new job? How do I get a new job? Forms, man. Right? No, you just send in like an email. You know, you send in an email talking about what you're good at and stuff, you know? Is that what it's done? I'm afraid you're in a little bit more difficulty than I imagined, sir. Well, suit yourself, boss. I'm off uh, to try and get out of here. Good luck. Doesn't matter, you know, I am so talented, so good at running companies, apart from this one, um, that I'm just, I'll be fine, you know? Don't need anybody. So, uh, toodaloo, run off. Ah, uh, I'll be fine. You know what? Let me give Carl a ring. You know, he's generally... I think he'll stick by me. He's generally pretty long. Again? Carl, it's up. Yeah, yeah, it's me. Yeah, uh... He'll stick by me, right? You know, through the tough times? No! my gym to volleyball game 
And to, to what? To mock me? To make me feel worse than I already do? I mean, yeah, kinda. And you don't even care! You're the physical embodiment of emotions and you don't seem to care very much about me. Why would I care about a 17-year-old girl sitting in a locker room crying over her little volleyball game that I could walk out there and win three for three? Why would you say that? You know how important this is to me. This is like the biggest game of my life, okay? And I'm trying to do everything by myself, okay? Uh, you're not. What do you mean? If you were doing your best, you'd be out there right now, sending some scary ass kids over the net. But instead, you're here, crying. And guess what? You have 11 other teammates out there whose one job is to support you. You're not doing this alone. Stop trying to take the blame for things you're not responsible for. Okay. You're right about both of those, actually. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, not now, not when we're But uh, you do have a point. I think I'm going to get back out there and, like, damn right you are. Okay, I'll see you again. No, you won't. I hate it. I'm going back to the brain. When you're not verbally abusing me, you're actually a little funny. So. Honey, why didn't I get an email from my teacher that you've been lashing out in class? I don't know. Have you been taking your meds? Yeah. Then why have you been finding them in the trash? Mom, you don't understand. Those things don't work. They just make me sick. Alice, you have to take them. It's for your own good. Yeah, and how are you supposed to know that? You don't even know me. You know, I cannot do this with you anymore. We used to spend so much time together, and now all I get are one-word answers at dinner. What am I supposed to do? Well, you know what? It's your fault. You're a horrible mother. Alice, that was so uncalled for. You know I'm just trying my best. I just want to help you. You can't just say things like that and not even listen to me. <gasps> oh my god, you're so annoying. I hope I never see you again. playing a trick on me. Ha ha, very funny. Pretend to be my dead mom. Alice. Mom? What, how are you? Are you some kind of ghost? Why would you come back? It's not like you even wanted to be here when you're alive. Mom? Mom? Are you seriously leaving me again? You can't just come back for two seconds and leave again. Oh my god. Mom? 
Mom, are you back? Oh my, why would you do that? That was so annoying. absolutely no reason for you to be here right now. You're just making everything worse. Well, how am I supposed to know that? There's no possible way where I can know why you do anything. Why am I angry? Mom, you left me. And now you some come back as some kind of ghost to haunt me? Mom, you abandoned me when I was 14 years old. 14? Mom, I thought it was my fault. I grieved for you. Mom, I needed you. And you just left me. Mom, I need you. Please don't come. I will always be here for you. <laughs> Oh my god, are you okay? I just got your text message. Not okay. She might have heard I didn't get into the university I wanted to. And Rebecca left me. So now just at this point, I, I, don't, I don't have anything. Dude, listen. If I could leave my house, I would come straight over and give you a big hug. And we could laugh about this stupid situation that is happening. Just, oh, how I hate this quarantine right now. You're not alone, even if you think you had nothing right now. You can still make it and find another university or even get a job or an internship or just take a gap year like me. James, dude, stop being silly. Stop crying over this girl right now, right? You're being silly. Just listen and understand. You, you are a smart and intelligent guy that can do so much in his life right now, but you just hit a bad part. And it doesn't matter that you didn't get into the university you wanted to. It's like, in a few weeks, there'll be so many other places will want you and you'll be in your new place, new university, who knows, maybe a new girl. And you'll look back in this moment and just start to laugh and just saying how silly you're acting right now. You don't understand. My parents wanted me to go. They dreamt of me going to Cambridge. My grandfather went there. My father went there. I just don't understand how I messed up. It's just like, my grades were fine. I just didn't get accepted. I just don't know what to do with myself anymore. And so what? Yes, your grandfather and your dad went to Cambridge. Doesn't mean you have to go too. You can go anywhere you want to. And go anywhere you like. It doesn't mean you have to follow the footsteps. 
Yes, but what about Rebecca? She just decided to leave me out of nowhere. I don't understand if I did something wrong. Did I do something wrong? I don't know what I did, but now at this point, I don't have anyone. Oh, James, you know how girls are. They're all about drama, 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 drama. Literally, that's all they care about. But I actually liked her, and I thought she actually liked me back. I'm sure she did like you. And remember, before you two started dating, you guys were best friends. I feel like all you have to do is just talk to her again. And I just don't understand what happened to this year. First this quarantine, now Cambridge, now Rebecca. This this year has been terrible. And like, just tell me about it. Like, I don't understand. Everything's just going down and down and it's getting worse. James, you need to look on the bright side of things. Yes, we're under the strict lockdown right now. And we can't leave our houses, but pretty soon, quarantine will be over. And we can go back and live our lives normally. And in a couple of months, no, in a couple of months, school will be over. And then we'll be free to do whatever we want to do. How cool does that sound? Tell me. Come on, you nasty thing, turn on! Why does this always happen to me? Freddy, is that you? Will you help me fix my phone? You will? Good. What's that? No, it's not cloudy outside. Oh, iCloud. I, I got it. Okay. But the phone won't turn on. The computer? Okay. What's that? iWeather.com? Oh, iCloud.com. Sorry. So why can't I see you for you to help me? Oh, Corona. I see. They're gonna love this. The computer's not turning on. No, I'm serious. Okay, try it on the iPad, but I'm telling you, I can't see anything on the iPad. Got it on. What's that you said? iCloud. I... Cloud. Huh? Speech to text? You mean I can type into the iPad with my voice? I... I C L. C O L U D Okay, it's not working. How about we forget this and you try to help me watch a show on TV? It'll be fun. I'm pressing the power button. Nothing's happening. Freddy? Freddy, Freddy, nothing's happening. Freddy, where'd you go? This is Ed. Yes, Freddy, good. Alright, so the TV's not turning on. Let me go try something else. I think I just need to readjust the wires. Freddy? Freddy? It all blew up. Freddy, it's not working. How about we call it a day? Crap, I'm gonna be late.
Well, well, well. Look who finally decided to show up. I'm sorry I'm late. I just forgot the meeting was earlier today and Elizabeth, I didn't- that is not an excuse. We have more to- Lizzie! I'm sorry? I, I would prefer it if you called me Lizzie. And I, I would prefer it if you would stop interrupting me and shut up. Sorry, ma'am. Now let's begin. As you know, there was an attack on some people at our local museum early this morning. Someone planted a bomb in the gift shop, killing five and injuring 15, as far as we know. So, I need you all to drive out there ASAP and get me some photos. You all have your press passes, so grab your cameras and get moving. Here are your assignments. Alex, the mayor is giving a speech starting at 10.30 today. I expect you to be outside the north entrance of the museum at exactly 10.20. Helen, the paramedic should still be on site. Try and get an interview, see what's going on, and report back to me. Elizabeth. Lizzie. Lizzie, you will be getting reactions from the people outside the museum. All right, get moving. Lizzie, what are you still doing here? I, I'd like to ask a question. Fine, go ahead. Why am I taking photos outside? What do you mean? Were my instructions not clear? No, no, no. I mean, if the damage was done inside, why am I not going there? Priceless art was blown up. Even the building itself is an artifact from our past. Elizabeth, Lizzie, whatever your name is, let me explain something to you. When I give you an assignment, I expect you to do what I ask. But all I'm doing is taking photos of people outside. The real story's inside. If I could just, to, just no, go and... I don't think you understand what we're trying to do here. We don't want to scare people. We just want to give them an update. But they should be scared. A freaking bomb blew up in there. Centuries of artifacts destroyed. The people deserve to know the truth, not just basic information. If we just say that the building has been blown up and there's been destruction, what are people going to think? We're a goddamn newspaper. We need to tell the truth. No, Elizabeth, that is not our job, and it certainly isn't yours. So I suggest you stay in your lane and get the work I have given you done. Understood? Oh, I understand completely. I understand that you're a horrible person. You don't respect other people or consider their opinions. I mean, for God's sakes, we've been working together for two years and you still call me Elizabeth, even though I say every single day to call me Lizzie. So you know what? I'm done. I'm done with all the crap you've been putting me through. I can't deal with this any longer. As of today, you've lost yourself a photographer. No, no, Lizzie, no need to get upset. We need you on our team. I need you. We're friends, so let's just- Friends? You really think we're friends? Erin, you are sorely mistaken. Why don't you get moving? Someone needs to take those photos and it's not going to be me. Have a good day. Thank you. <laughs> Look at her. All that makeup. <laughs> Pathetic. I'm not wearing a lot of makeup. You should be walking out like that. It doesn't matter. Why do you care? <laughs> it's your fault you chose to wear that skirt. Just leave me alone. No way. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. No way. Job stealer. I'm sorry. What did you say to me? Job stealer? Who are... <laughs> nothing. It's fine. Nothing. Whatever. Anyway, so... Oh my gosh. I illegal. Ill... Who are you calling illegal? How can you... S oh my gosh. That's, that's... Nothing. It's fine. I, I gotta go, okay? I'll call you later. Why don't you just go back to where you came from already? <laughs> just stop it already! She's gonna go to school. 
Are you out of your mind? What's wrong with you? How can you say something like that? You don't look Muslim. What is your problem? I can't, I can't stand this anymore. Can you just leave me alone? Terrorists! Get rid of them all! <laughs> Would you just shut up already? Every day, I plan what outfit I wear every single day, and it takes me so long. But at the end of it, I'm always so happy, so glad that I have the confidence to express myself. And then I come here, and people just say, oh, look at her, look what she's wearing. Or people, crazy people in the street, I just, I don't know, I just, I'm not... It doesn't make any... No. I just need people to stop and to let me be. I'm minding my own business. Why can't anybody else mind their own business? Why are people so critical? I'll just never leave you alone. Ever. I just don't get it. You know, why? Why do people care that I'm Latina? So what? Like, job, job, job stealer, like, illegal? How can you, how can you look at someone in the eyes and say that to them? And no, it's not even true. Doesn't change the fact that that's, oh my gosh. My parents, my parents worked so hard to get where they are and to give me this life. And for them to say it like that, to degrade, I just, how are you supposed to feel safe and loved in a place where that's the opposite of what you get? Where people call you a terrorist and a school bomber for the way that you choose to believe in God. Like, I just, like, it doesn't make any sense. Do you know what it's like to be so afraid of telling people about who you are that you just, to, you decide not to at all, to hide one of the most important parts that make you, you? away from everybody because you're afraid that somebody's gonna judge you for it, that somebody's gonna call you a terrorist and somebody's gonna say or think that I'm not good enough or that I'm a terrible person. It just, it doesn't make any sense. No matter how hard I try, every single time somebody hears the word Muslim, they freak out. It doesn't, why, it do, why does it matter? I, I can't stand it. Why does anyone even care that I'm... ...understand why people have such a problem with me being... I'm so sick of being treated like I'm... ...different. I'm so sorry, but I don't have my contacts in. I can't see a single thing. So give me a second to go to the bathroom and put in my contacts, okay? It's totally fine, Jessica. How do I even say this to Jessica? How will she react? Oh God, what if she hates me? <sighs> no, I can't think like that or else I'll never tell her. I'm going to tell her what happened and I'm going to do it as soon as she comes back. <sighs> Allie, honey, you look interesting. Uh, what happened to you? A lot's happened in the past few weeks, Jessica. Well, of course a lot's happened. Have you not seen the text I sent you? Uh, no. Allie, honey, I love you, but you're a mess. Complete mess. Oh, Jessica, you're so nice. 
This is just one of the many reasons I love you. That's sweet, honey. I love you too. Now, we have very important things to get to. Since you clearly haven't read your texts, let me fill you in on all the deets. Jessica, I actually have to tell you something first. It's gonna have to wait, honey. This is important. <sighs> Jessica, this is... Ellie, what did I just say? Don't yell at me. That's no way to treat your maid of honor. Now back to the important <sighs> stuff. I realize we're in a pandemic, but we've got a full schedule over the next few days. So the florist called me, and he wants us to go to his shop and see what flowers we like best tomorrow. Of course, we'll wear masks, gloves, all that. How does that sound? Sounds good? Allie? Allie? Allie, are you even listening to me? Allie! What is going on with you? Allie! Yeah, totally. I'm, I'm listening, I promise. Repeat what I just said. Uh... We have to go to the bakery and taste test different cakes tomorrow. Honey, no. Far from it. We need to go to the florist and choose flowers, okay? Florist. Flowers. Get that. Got it? Mm -hmm. <gasps> okay. Um, what else? We, we need to do a final run through the venue, make sure everything's perfect. I made sure every household has its own table. Every table is six feet apart. I called in a few favors and we have tests for everybody. Great. We'll go right after we choose the flowers to get it over with, all right? Allie, does that sound good? Allie! What the hell, Jessica? What do you mean, what the hell? Why are you eating ice cream? At this rate, you aren't going to fit into your dress. Yeah, um, about that. I have something important to tell you. Honey, I'm not done. Just pay attention. <sighs> Fine. Now, in two days from now, we'll be going to the bakery to taste test different cakes. And right after, you have your final wedding dress fitting. I can't believe you're getting married in two weeks. Are you done now? No. Since you said I could choose whatever dress I wanted, I chose this one. What do you think? I'll wear a cute little jacket, too, so I don't get cold. It looks really nice, Jessica. Right, really well, nice. I see, you're not, I see you're not too impressed. Take a look at this makeup, though. And these earrings? I plan to wear this whole outfit to you, Wayne. Jessica, why are you going to wear lipstick? You're going to be wearing a mask. It's not like anyone's going to see it. Dang it. I hadn't thought of that. I'll have to get a face shield for this. See, this is why we make such a great team. You're the smart one, and I'm the hot one. It's perfect. Now, what do you need to tell me, hun? Promise me that you won't get mad. Honey, if you're trying to change the venue last minute, I swear to God, I'll have a heart attack. Oh my God, Jessica, it's nothing like that. Can you just let me finish my sentence? Honey, are you okay? No, Jessica. No, I'm not. What's wrong, Allie? I'm here to help you. You can tell me anything. <sighs> Jessica, the wedding? It's off. Well... What the hell happened? What did you do? Jessica, it's not about what I did. It's about what my fiancé did with my best friend. He cheated on you? Well, Allie, I don't know what the hell we're going to do. What do you mean? We're obviously going to cancel the wedding. Allie, I didn't bust my tail planning this wedding for the past couple months so it could all burn to the ground. Either you kiss and make up with your fiancé or you find yourself someone else to marry in two weeks. Jessica, that's insane. There's no way I'm doing that. Allie, I'm literally the best and the hottest freaking maid of honor in the world. I'm not letting you take away my special day. You are getting married two weeks from now. Jessica. Allie, I... Look, it's the florist. I have to take this. I'm picking you up tomorrow so we can go choose the flowers and look at the venue. Be ready or else. <sighs> well, what the hell am I supposed to do now? Thanksgiving. 
This is a colonizer's day. Oh, would you shut up already, sis? America's a great country. It should be celebrated. You only think that because you're a white man in America. Lucia, you're white. I know. Ah, Thanksgiving. What a splendid holiday, right? I mean, it's the one time where yelling at your family about politics is just a little bit more exciting. And yes, I do know I'm white. Just because I'm white doesn't mean I can't be educated, Sammy. Well, Sammy, how's college going? It's fine. And Lucia, how's your schoolwork going, sweetie? I mean, school's fine, besides the fact that they're ignoring that black people are dying every day. I hate this child with a passion. Yes, I know she's my sister, but still. To be completely honest with you, I feel like people are dragging the country's climate right now. I mean, that's why I'm voting for Trump, because I mean, he'll settle everything. Lucia, can we just have a normal dinner without politics? <laughs> Coming from the Trump supporter. Lucia, please. Mom, how do you let Dad support that man? <sighs> Look, I don't get into politics. That's just a dirty game. I let my husband get into all of that because, well, to be quite honest with you, it doesn't really affect me. I'm not getting into this. Does anybody want some stuffing? No, Mom, no one wants your stuffing. Hey, don't talk to your mother that way. Oh, what, you come off and you literally support a man that says women belong in the kitchen. I don't support him for that. I really don't. I support the man because of taxes and stuff. I mean, I'm not racist or homophobic or sexist. I just, I just believe I have the right to my own money. I mean, I'm not a greedy person. That's not what I'm saying. I just, uh, forget this. Lucia, I'm not sexist. No, but what you are is selfish. You only support that man because of your own self-interest. You know how much privilege you must have because you get to vote for that man and get to walk around and not have to worry about your rights getting stripped away? Hey, my life was horrible. I don't have any privilege because I'm white. I grew up in the worst neighborhood and you kids will not even have to worry about that because of how hard I worked. None of that is because you are white. What? None of that is because you are white. <laughs> People are literally dying because of their skin color or the way they walk or talk and you don't think you have white privilege? You're out of your goddamn mind, Dad! Your damn mind! I guess I feel sort of angry. Not anyone else, just myself, you know? I mean, you guys have actual reasons for being the way you are. It doesn't sound right, but you understand. I mean, 
My life used to seem so good. I had a nice home. My parents cared about me. I wasn't abused or anything. But I never really knew what I needed. I always thought that I was above having needs. At least I tried to be. To need something or someone is to be incomplete. And I didn't want to be incomplete. I wanted to be perfect. So I guess I'm angry now because I wasn't able to be angry then. Feelings, they're a sign of weakness. They're a sign of being a person. And I wasn't anybody. So everything had to come from the outside. But the outside, it, it, it was so public. Everybody looks at the outside. Everybody judges the outside. And all I wanted to do was disappear. So I started wearing baggy clothes and exercising more to hide my body. And that didn't work. Nothing worked. So I, well, you know. But I think I'm getting better now. It's getting better. Talking like this in this group, it's helped. It's really helped. Thank you for sharing that with the group meeting. That was very brave of you. I'm so glad that you're making progress. Does anybody else feel like sharing? Charlotte, how about you? Oh, um, okay. It's hard to go after that. Well, I went outside yesterday. It was my friend's birthday and we all went to dinner at this restaurant. It was fine at first, but then my hands started sweating and my legs started shaking. I felt like everybody was staring at me and I kept getting this feeling that I was gonna say something or do something wrong. Like, I could have said something offensive, like, oh my gosh, you look small today. As compared to every other day when the person looks fat. Ugh. You see what I mean? I just, I just felt so awkward. But I didn't wanna leave early. So I tried those breathing techniques that you suggested, Dr. Turner. But by the time I felt better and I finally left my mind to join the party, I felt like everybody was staring at me again. So I left. I don't really feel like saying anything else. That's completely fine, Charlotte. Thank you for sharing. It's great that you're trying to use the techniques we came up with last week. Small steps, right? I believe in you. Okay, Violet, it looks like you're the only person who hasn't spoken yet. Is there anything you want to share? Sure, I can share. You won't get it. No one gets it. You can tell me that you understand. Of course you would say that. It's such a typical thing for a therapist to say. But still, you can never really understand. You know what? I don't even care anymore. I used to care. But I'm just so, so tired. I'm tired of caring. You know, I used to wake up three hours earlier than I do now, just so I could look nice. I'd shower and do my hair and pick out a nice outfit. Now I just wear the same thing every day. I was supposed to go see my little sister's play weeks ago. She was so excited when I told her that I was going to go watch her. But then, that day, I couldn't even get out of bed. She still won't talk to me. I don't 
don't really care though. I just don't care anymore. Hi, my name is Kim Gazowski and I am the theater teacher here for 11th and 12th grade at Dwight. Tonight what you're going to be seeing is work that we've been doing in class on an ancient Greek feminist comedy called Lysistrata by Aristophanes. This play was chosen last May by our 12th grade senior, Ava Goldfarb, as part of her DP assessment in directing. We enlisted all the 11th graders and she's been directing them for a month. On top of that, 11th grader Bernardo Sequeira decided that he wanted to try some directing and so he is also directing two scenes and I had the privilege of directing them in one scene tonight. Um, what you're going to see is a collection of five scenes out of a play and the students will set up the scenes as they go along. While we were rehearsing, we we're very mindful of the pandemic that we're in. And so all of the performers will be masked and they will all be socially distant. This class meets at 825 every morning and we've had a fantastic time working together, working on ancient Greek comedy. We hope you enjoy yourself as well. Hi, I'm Eva Goldfarb. I'm a senior at the Dwight School and this is my DP directing project. Um, I'm so happy I got to work with this, my castmates. It's been a really enjoyable experience. The scene that you're about to see takes place after the opening scene of the play Lysistrata. Lysistrata is the title character of the show and she is a young woman that convinces all the women all over Greece to, not, to stop being with their husbands in order for them to sign a treaty and stop funding wars that are um, unnecessary and are causing a lot of death in the um, context of, in, in, in ancient Greece. Um, the scene you're about to see is the three old men trying to take back the vault from the three old women who have made sure that the magistrate can't access any funds to pay for, a more, for more war. Uh, the three old men and the three old women have a battle of sorts and in the second scene the magistrate confronts um, Lysistrata that I have separated into different characters to reflect different types of women and different stereotypes of women. So the magistrate conflicts all these, confronts, uh, the magistrate confronts all these women into giving up the protest and setting things back to the way it was before the women put up a fight and the treaty is eventually signed. I'll be crippled for life. And it has come to this. Unmanned by women, the indignity of it. Will you quit belly aching and listen up? Here's the situation, man. Our gold is being held hostage by a bunch of old biddies. It's downright humiliating. We're locked out here shaking our fists up the air while they're lolling around in there on money bags, filing their nails and uh, doing crosswords. For shame! For shame! Why, it makes my blood boil! Why, well, I'm thirsty to be! Earth makes nightly! Shall we do it, gentlemen? You betcha! Yes, sir, Bob. By cracky, we will! Do what? Yeah, do what? Smoke the Hellcats out! Smoke the Hellcats out! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let me up. Where we want up? There'll be no hole in this barman back. Well, 
looks like a bunch of John Philip Sosa groupies. <laughs> That's with the lighter boys. Where's the fire? Or rather, where is it? There's one of the shameless hussies now, running loose like some wild cow on a prowl. Singe her heated eyebrows off. Just try it, old man, and you'll be walking funny for the rest of your life. Which amounts to, gee, anybody got a stopwatch? I'll give any one more than 20 minutes tops. You think I won't take you on? I'll take you on. Yeah, you think we're some old gentlemen that don't rough up a couple girls, you got another thing coming. Oh, I'd never have left to that assumption. No, no one could have made that mistake. Tell me, when's the last time you took a bath, leaky pants? Let's at least get up one of them. Mess with us, sister, and you'll be throwing caution to the wind. Yeah, we'll trouble with a capital T. And that rhymes with B? And that stands for... Bull. All right, that tears it. Fall in, men. Hop, hop, hop. <clears throat> Let's teach these she devils a lesson. To arms, ready, light. Ladies. Well, that was just so totally uncalled for. Yeah, uncalled for. Underhanded, really. Not quite, but not hardly. Are we gonna let them get away with that? Oh, oh not a good tin type. Not my mingle bow. Stand aside, fellas. Oh, it's not gonna get pretty. Not a cannibal new juice, Grandpa. If you so much as wheeze in my direction, you'll be saying soprano. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Says who? Says me. Says you. <laughs> That's right. And who's gonna stop me? Me. Oh yeah? Yeah. Is that so? You're cruising for a bruising, old man. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't knock you into next week, you toothless old freak job. I'll give you five good reasons, prune breath. Yeah, you and what are me? Are you as excited as I am right now? At least. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you've still got some snap in our garters after all. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you filthy minx. What the heck is going on here? I suppose so. The little lady we have to thank for all of this bowl. Oh, you're welcome. No, it was really a pleasure and much easier than I could have ever anticipated. If i know known all it took was a modicum of intelligence and a bit of determination, I'd have shut up that slaughterhouse long ago. Slaughterhouse? That's the treasury. Slaughterhouse? Treasury? What's the difference? It's all men can ever think to do with money, fund their wars. Look, there's truly a criminal lack of imagination in question. And I suppose you, with your vast housewives' knowledge of money, could do better. Housewives? No few truths you exalted politicians seem to forget. For instance, we spend money on our children too, but instead we hand them meals and books, unlike you who hand them swords and daggers. It's the same money, just different principles. This is typical emotional blackmail. But then again, that's all you girls can ever resort to. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps they do feel it more. After all, we're the ones who have to stay in, close behind shutters in our houses of mourning, listening to the lost echoes while our loved ones have died in your wars. I can't, I can't expect you to understand the higher principles at stake, what we are defending. Your sphere is too tiny to appreciate what we do for you. Yes, you really knocked yourselves out for us and get so little thanks in return. It's hardly fair. We should really send you bouquets of black flowers for every wasted year, every hollow hour, every shudder of fear when a messenger knocks. Garlands, wreaths, and chaplets would line your halls. Lie like black snowdrifts along your marble corridors so that every day you would have to trudge through the rotting, stinking, wasted vastness of our gratitude for all, all that you have taken from us. Our lost youth, 
our spent and useless love, everything we have lost at your hands. Thank you. I speak for mothers and wives everywhere. Thank you. Well, if you were just going to get morbid, there is no talking to you. God forbid I should talk about death to a warmonger. How uncouth of me. Will you be reasonable and give me the keys to the city's vault? I will be reasonable and keep them. You've exhibited all too clearly you can't be trusted with the keys. You've squandered my great city's fortune on the machinery of death and fuel for your nightmare factories. It's time you went on a diet. No more gold, no more blank checks. All your shiny ships have sunk to the bottom of the wine dark sea with half our dear ones in them. We have other plans for our riches. I cannot believe I'm even bothering to discuss this with you. You know nothing of politics. You have all the sanctimonious stubbornness of the utterly ignorant. You have a brain the size of a flea turn, yet you dare to stand on your hind legs and scold me about how I conduct affairs of state. It's preposterous. There's more at stake than your little soap opera. I need the money for battleships. Or perhaps you've forgotten. We're in the middle of a war, woman. Stand aside and behave yourself. Yes, that's your favorite tune. I've heard it all my life. Shut up and don't ask questions. Every woman has had to bite her tongue a thousand times when men come home from a long day of gassing about when, but never whether, to attack some hapless new enemy or other. When we ask if such unchecked aggression is wise, we're told, now is not the time. It never is the time to listen to any other voice other than your own until now. You'll have to listen to us because it turns out we do have something you want. It simply never occurred to us as to whether to let you have it, but we do. And we refuse to bring any more children into the world to be fodder for your wars. That's what it comes down to. It's up to you. This is utterly unnatural. <laughs> is it unnatural to prize life over death, peace over conquest and havoc? Plenty and joy over, well, deprivation and fear. No. Sir, the system you have imposed on us all these years is what is unnatural. Left to their own devices, our people would never choose your option of mayhem and sorrow. All my people have ever wanted this chance to love and to work to the best of their abilities. We are the same everywhere. It's the same everywhere. We're not unique in our hopes. By all means, ally yourself with the mud-spattered, doltish masses. They are your natural kin. But I choose to believe that our Athenian destiny is special. I'm proud to breathe the rarefied air of our most exalted of nations. Our singular fate brings with a singular burden of responsibility. Look, it may very well be that at my washtub, I don't snuff the same heady air as you do. But from what I've seen, People don't differ much place to place. We've got no monopoly over virtue nor evil. There are asses everywhere. They are thick in the ground in these parts, certainly. But also people worth loving and knowing at the end of every drawn sword. If the Athenians were as special as you make out, we wouldn't hold each other's lives so cheap. We'd be more in line than that. And perhaps if we could master our own egotism, we might find that the only people singing our praises weren't just other Athenians. But that's somewhere down a very long road. In the meantime, we'll be keeping all the balls shut up tight! Hi everyone, I'm Bernardo. I directed the next two scenes that you are going to see. It's actually the same scene performed in two different ways by two different sets of actors. In this next scene, you see Lysistrata's plan finally being carried out, and you see a husband, Synesius, desperate to reunite with his wife, Marin. And it was the first time I actually got to direct something properly, so it was really exciting for me. And the first scene you're going to see is done in such a way that we highlight the theme of the play of a woman, the female character in this case, Marin, wielding a power that she didn't know she had when she starts the scene. And so it's more realistic and it keeps in line with the scenes that you previously saw, directed by Ava. And the scene you're going to see after that is the same scene. It's done by Bennett and Andres. And it's two guys playing the male and the female parts because that's how it was done back in ancient Greece. And so we're honoring that tradition 
but we're using it for comedic effect. So I had a lot of fun directing these scenes. I'm sure my actors had a lot of time being in them as well, so I hope you enjoy them. seems to be the problem. I'm beside myself. If you don't go home soon, I'm going to start to do damage to myself. Being alone. Baby, have mercy. Give me a squeeze, I'll kill her with me. What, here? Sure, here, there, anywhere. What does it matter at this point? In front of all of them? What do they care? They came here for a fine evening in the theater. Refined? It's a crude comedy. It's by Aristophanes. You seem very unclear on this whole endeavor. I'm unclear on everything at this moment. I'm behind my desire. I can't think anymore. Oh, you poor dear. Let me feel your forehead. Oh, honey. Oh, baby. Ooh, you do seem a mite warm. You don't know the half of it. Let me go see if I can rustle up something to 
help you with that. Everything I need is right here. Oh, let me take your pulse. Take anything you want. But just don't go away. Uh, it's okay. I'm sure it's racing. No kidding. In your eyes, they're a little glazed. I'm surprised I'm not cross-eyed by now. In your skin, there's a certain sheen to it that concerns me. And a smell. <laughs> what is that smell? I don't know, but keep sniffing. Come a little closer. The key to the diagnosis Ooh. of several diseases is... Oh, yeah. This is very serious indeed. I may have to take drastic measures. Mouth to mouth? Mouth to mouth? Please? If I give you mouth to mouth, will you work for peace? If I give you mouth to mouth, I'll set up a little shrine in your honor and worship it in the back of the yard. Daily! That's nice. But what I want at the moment is a treaty. A treaty? Give me a kiss. Oh, gee, you know, I just can't seem to get the moon on when there's a war going on. Call for me when you're home for good. What, you're leaving me like this? I'll be waiting. Oh, no. time with your husbands, good? So let's get back to baby, let's get back to soldier making. So you want us to make children for your endless wars, carry them for nine months, raise them for 18 years, teach them about morals, feed them, love them, nurture them, only to ship them off to war to kill and be killed? Yes. You realize that's crazy. Right? Oh, Alyssa Strati, you are so attractive. Ugh. Oh, I mean naive. Look, this isn't, only, this isn't only my endless war. It is your endless war. It is all of humanity's endless war. Ugh. War is as old as time itself. It is the way of the world. Written in the stars, war is fate and well tradition. And anyway, it's not going to stop anytime soon. So let's go with the program here, shall we? Good talk. By the way, your dress matches your eyes. Really nice. Anyways, let's get back to baby making and killing. Hup hup! Ah! The sport! Enemy war sword! Attack! Attack! Wait, I uh, come in peace. In peace? I, I don't understand. Look, we've got a problem. A real problem. Bigger than any war. Hello, ladies. Hi, a Spartan warrior. My, you're all hunky. Can I get a witness, ladies? If you think the Spartan warrior is hunky, say, oh yeah! Oh, oh yeah. yeah! Say, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blow him a kiss, ladies. Just stop it! Okay, the magistrate is right for once. Let's stop distracting the Spartan envoy. I'm, I'm sorry, the hunky, strong, virile Spartan envoy. You do realize he is the enemy. Hopefully not for long. What is going on? Soldiers, why are you here? Uh, to negotiate a treaty. To negotiate a treaty. To negotiate a treaty. Ooh la la, hunky and smart. A treaty? I'm confused. We're at war. City states of Greece have always been at war. You can't change the order of things. This is the way they are. Uh, yeah, we were fine with that until the women locked us out of our houses. Our women won't let us back into our beds until we have a treaty. And frankly, I miss my wife's cooking and the way she smiles when I tell a joke and. Well, all the things. I just miss my wife. We all miss our wives. We can't live like this anymore. It's barbaric. Uh, so yeah, we want a treaty. What do you say? 
Oh, Magistrate, wait, come here. You can be the hero here. How do you figure? End the endless wars, make everyone happy, including me. You do want to make me happy, don't you, Magistrate? In theory, we fight wars to bring peace, so technically, if you end the wars, you are a hero. A war hero, a peace hero. My hero. Hmm. A hero. Listen up, enemies. I think it's time we had a treaty. It's it's time. Time. Now, let's get. I hereby declare peace. Huzzah! And let's get down to some serious peacemaking. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Now that the war is over, what are we to do with all these babies? We'll send them to school, they'll build us a better world, and take care of us in our old age. Fantastic! Woo! All right, those are our student performances. Thank you very much for attending. I'm sure the students really appreciate your support, and we will see you soon. Have a wonderful night.